Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our consultant in this segment, David Miner from PureFlow, welcome to the show. Thank you, Anne. Today we're talking about, you know, sole proprietorship, moving sole, a sole proprietor into a corporate. Um, maybe you can start by defining the two. A sole proprietor is an individual who has registered a business. Mm -hmm. And so you go to the register of companies and you say, I'd like to register a name. And if the name is available, you register a business as an individual. You don't need any partners, any uh, other people to be with you at that point. However, if you need to grow the business, you may need to transform it into, say, a limited liability company mm -hmm. where you introduce uh, other people into the governance of your organization. You need directors. Mm -hmm. uh, you may introduce professionals and turn your sole proprietorship or single person business into more of a corporate. Is there a difference between a sole proprietor and a self-employed person? Technically, no, but yes, there is. Um, you can be self-employed in various ranges of business formats. So when I register sole proprietorship, I'm self-employed, but I could also remain self-employed as the managing director of a limited liability company, what we call LTD, limited. Um, I could even take that a bit further and get into a joint venture with other people or a partnership and still remain active as a part shareholder who is now involved in the business on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm still self-employed. In the earlier segment, I was speaking to Dr. Gitaria and he made an interesting comment. And he said, you know, you, you cannot grow if you're just limiting yourself to yourself. Um, you know, is, is that true? I think that's quite accurate. You, you can grow to some extent. Okay. And, and, and the extent to which you will grow is limited to what you know. So let's do an audit. So I'm a self-employed person. I happen to know a little bit of accounts, but I've never sat a CPA in my life. So to the extent I can manage the finances of the business is limited to my financial or accounting knowledge. Uh, and all the other disciplines, marketing, sales, procurement, um, my knowledge on uh, legal matters. So if I don't involve others, I'm actually limiting this business to what I know. And the reality is that, that as, as the business grows, I will obviously need other professional input. And that's where we all go to school. So we can get a chance to utilize our area of specialization in a larger setting. So moving from a sole proprietor to a corporate, does that mean that I have to sell my shares? So you can actually maintain shareholding and infuse um, professionalism by bringing on professionals on board who are really only at a management level. You could still even infuse um, other highly knowledgeable or even technical people at a governance point of view, uh, from a governance level, uh, such as directors, um, you could have a governing council of specialists who come to advise the business on direction, on trends, on strategy, and still not give up shareholding. So you could actually retain shareholding. However, to fully engage highly experienced and professional uh, knowledge and expertise, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it is worthwhile to give up some shareholding so that they've got what we call skin in the game, you know? They've got a real share in it. So what is the process of transforming my business from a sole proprietorship into a corporate? One is, is the legal step, is that the, the register of companies needs to recognize you as a particular type of an entity. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a sole proprietor, you need to go and say, I would like to transform my business into a limited liability company or into a joint venture or a partnership. Um, or later on, if you'd like to go public, you do need to regularize these uh, legal aspects. Once that's done, um, then you need to behave like one. And, and that involves bringing on board the expertise, um, professionals at management level, uh, the right governance structures, the kind of um, members of the board or governing council who can bring in the expertise that you need to be able to grow. And then the other resources follow. Of course, some of the other steps we've seen is people looking at their processes and saying, I, I think I need to make sure that even if these individuals who are here now, who've contributed so greatly to making this entity successful and profitable, are not there, the processes are there. You could actually bring in another lot of individuals in management, in governance, and we'll still get the same kind of results in this business. And that's why we start going for you know, ISO certification and other 
process uh, validation that shows that our processes are in place, not just today and with the individuals who are there, but they're institutionalized now. I, I love my little business. I love being a sole proprietor. Yeah. You know, is there anything wrong with just me keeping it small and, 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 and just maintaining what I have? Absolutely not. I, I think businesses are uh, as alive as the vision of the, uh, the founder or the person behind it. They know all their customers by name. They give the customers what they want. They are flexible. They can tailor make uh, customers' requirements on the spot. Yeah. They don't need board meetings or strategic management meetings or department meetings to decide these things. And they can do that because they're small. And so it depends really on the vision. If, if your vision is you're in the business because you like providing a particular service or a product mm -hmm. uh, in a fluid way, in a flexible way, then definitely staying small has its perks. You could still do that as you grow, but that you know, requires a, a very dynamic organization with uh, the ability to take that risk of, of not being structured, uh, as structured, uh, and yet trying to grow uh, you know, uh, geographically and, and market-wise. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think it really depends on your vision. We've run out of time, but David Miner, thank you so much for coming to share your wisdom with us. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, as always. You've been watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Have a great week and God bless. Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank, you are listening, caring partner.